Okay, so we're here at Romford Horror Film Festival. We've had uh, the screening of Just One Last Thing. Uh, a rapturous reception for the film as well, <laughs> should add. Um, first, quick, first of all, can you just introduce yourselves and your role within the film, please? Yeah. I'm Alex Gillespie and I wrote, directed and produced the film. And the rest. Oh, hi, I'm <laughs> Caroline and I played Martha, the um, strange lady in the... Um, Wetsuit, blah blah. <laughs> I'm Julio, I'm the cinematographer. Um, uh, Henry, I did the sound, uh, the production sound. I'm Gaia, and I was the first AD. Great, so welcome. Um, first question I believe this is the first time some of you have seen this film kind of at all, mm -hmm. or certainly on the big screen. Um, let's talk about the experience, how that was, just with yourself, Alex. Well, I've seen it about 400 times. <laughs> I know every second of that. So I'm going to pass that question to my team here. So, Caroline, you haven't seen it, have you? I've seen nothing. No, that's the very first time I've seen anything. And um, well, that's not really for me to say, but I think she's done an absolutely amazing job. Yep. Fantastic. I knew this. Yeah, exactly. Um, the setting... I mean, it's just stunning, isn't it? It's just so vivid and rich. What, I'm not supposed to be saying this. Somebody else surely should. But yeah, I'm very impressed. I, uh, like Sarah, who's here as well as an actor, watching yourself is excruciating. I mean, it, it, I, I haven't quite recovered from the shock. I thought I was 23. Um, but um, no, but I, I'm really impressed with the way the film came over. And um, so I'm, not, I'm absolutely delighted with what I've seen. She's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I agree. I mean, I also watched the film quite a few times, but then the first time, probably the whole thing on a big screen, and it was it was really good. Mm -hmm. I really, yeah, I really liked it. <laughs> I can definitely tell I've got hearing damage because listening to the cut at home, I, I had it a lot louder. <laughs> than I in the cinema. But yeah, no, um, yes, yeah, because I helped out a little bit with the post production sound as well. Um, so I've also, like Alex, seen this film 7,473 times. <laughs> but it was very new experience, actually, watching this today. Mm. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah, um, Yeah, same as Julia, like, I've watched a few cuts before, and, like, a few versions, actually. Um, but, yeah, like, I think today, he, like, if I watch, like, a new movie again, and, yeah, even I have my mom here, that she doesn't speak a word of English, <laughs> but she understood the story, and she got, you know, this sort of emotional reaction that we were trying to get. Oh, yeah. great. So that's a Italian good feedback. It's the universal language of cinema. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alex, first question for you. How did this film come into being? Where did the idea come from? Um, well, originally I just wanted to make a feature film and um, as the next step in my progression. Um, and originally the idea was about a reunion of five girls in a sort of country setting where they would go walking and drinking and they'd talk about their lives at university and how, you know, how strong the friendship was. And one of those girls was going to be dead and only one of the others could see her. Okay. And the whole point was that girl had arranged the weekend to enable her dead friend to find peace and move on. And then I looked at the cost of hiring a house in the country for four weeks, and I thought, ah, oh, well, that's my whole budget, so uh, I can't do that. So I then thought, well, what have I got? The only thing I've got is my, my own home and a couple of locations of friends. And so um, I had to reset the story in kind of grown-up, house, why would two young women who were, I knew I was going to star those two girls, why would they be in a grown up house and I started thinking from there and I still wanted this fundamental idea that she was moving her dead friend on because I felt there was a really strong emotional uh, story there so um, that's where the story began and I thought it would be really nice to combine young people with an older generation, because yep. you don't often see that in film. Really, yeah. And so, actually, the setting and the idea of moving on to the next afterlife, as it were, was, mm. you know, actually fell really neatly together. And then I just started having fun with it, really. Mm. There's, um, there's quite a shift in tone in the film at different points. 
you know, there's comedic moments, but there's also very sad moments and uh, quite hard-hitting moments somewhat. How did you um, go about kind of getting the tone correct when you were writing? It's really tough, actually. Um, and at, and in, in fact, I found that when we were shooting, um, we were adjusting bits right. on, on set and I was rewriting script on set because <clears throat> I really wanted to get that. And, and even in the edit as well, we had to work quite hard to, yeah. to get that tone right because it is, I, I did really want to achieve um, emotional impact as well as a nice story. And I felt that um, you can achieve it really well if you combine a serious uh, emotion, emotional or, or scary bits with comedy. I feel that if you get the comedy right and you get the right tone of the comedy, then that really enhances yeah. the emotion. So that was the objective, and it is tough. And I had a great set of actors mm. who played that really well for me. Yeah. Um, so in the edit, I had quite a bit of material to play with. Okay. So it worked well. Yeah, it's a tough, very tough, we find this. We get lots of films that kind of attempt the comedy thing, but on a low budget, it's very difficult to pull that tone off because if you don't have actors who are capable of doing that comedy beat, then the whole thing doesn't ring true. Mm -hmm. So that's a uh, testament to you guys on your writing and your cast. That it's really, I think it really pulls it off. I think that, um, I mean, the cast are amazing. The crew and the cast became a family very quickly and they fired off each other and they worked together really, really well. And I was so lucky in um, choosing the personalities that I did because they just embodied the character I was after and, and they all came to you. <laughs> 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 Caroline in particular. Yeah. Um, and, they, and, and yeah, they really pulled it off and, and I know that you're, you guys are all still friends after uh, the shooting, which yeah. I think is lovely. Yeah, I think that was kind of a microcosm for your point, and that trying to find the right tone for the film. I felt like we all got along so well, and we all, as the kids would say, passed the vibe check. I think if there was a moment, both personally on and offset, in and out the script, if there was a moment that didn't pass the vibe check, we would all kind of know it, and that we'd do our best to get it to where it needed to be. No idea what he's talking. <laughs> 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 not a fucking clue. <laughs> I have no idea the vibes so, uh, Sorry, Caroline, you'd not pass the vibe check. I don't think I did. <laughs> no, I don't, oh, think, I don't so. think I did, I'm so sorry. <laughs> let's, let's talk to uh, Caroline. Oh, um, please. Don't. I'm just gonna <laughs> read something out here. We've got, um, this film's actually got four, no, four nominations in total. So best feature film, best actress, yeah. Well, and uh, best screenplay. Yeah. And also best film with a budget of between eleven and a hundred thousand pounds. I mean, to make a feature film on that budget anyway is quite incredible. Yeah. But to make it as good as this, yeah, fair play to you. Um, Caroline, how did you uh, join the project in the first place? Um, just very simply, it was um, advertised on one of the... Um, Mandy. Mandy, yeah, yeah. and uh, I thought that sounds fun or whatever. Um, I think it was just before Christmas, and um, kind of applied, because Martha sounded fun and interesting, Come and... Um, oh, this is not working. It's on. Hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just applied through um, a cast thing, a casting web, whatever, and... Um, it just sounded like a really good character, but I didn't give much thought to it. It was very, very sort of quick. Sorry, I'm trying to remember. Now I remember. But yeah, you had to do a um, Sarah's the other mad ghost, and she's laughing, but she's there, and I have to be up here. Um, but yeah, we had to do a little, um, you know, what's it called? Audition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On tape, there is a name for it. Self tape. Self tape. Self tape. Self -tape. And like it was a scene with. It's almost like I'm a professional actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, sorry, it is important in the sense that it was a scene with the two girls at the beginning. You know, so it was a three way scene, and I was like, well, you know, I can't do that. I haven't got anyone to read live on my own or whatever. I thought, fuck it, I'll do it as a monologue. So I just just sort of did the whole scene and didn't bother to get anyone to read in or anything. So I was really quite surprised when you got in touch. I knew then. <laughs> like, yeah, she's a god. Well, yeah, it is a little bit of a mad character. Um, 
But yeah, so, so it was just that. And then we had a Zoom, and I think one well, Zoom read through, one or more Zoom with a cast, and then didn't see each other till on set, yeah. which I think is quite interesting. We'd never met or anything. The first yeah. day of meeting is on set. Yeah. So that's, that's how it happened. And um, it's just such a beautiful script, and I can tell you a lot of them. We had a big joke during it that I was saying, I've done a lot, and you know, this is definitely not shit. Because <laughs> it wasn't. Have a lot done, of it have is. Done a lot of shit, yeah. I've done a lot of shit. <laughs> a lot of shit over a lot of years. But yeah, it's just a great, great script, as you can see. It's a very clever, intelligent script. Here, here, exactly, and it's very witty, and you know, it's like, it is rare, particularly for low budget, because you know, people want to make a film as an ego thing, and I never felt that at all no, okay. with Alex. I mean, of course, you know, that, that's part of everything we do, but you know. Yeah, it felt very much that it's from the heart, it's beautifully written, and you know, what a, what a house, eh? Yeah. That's her house. <laughs> so we're going to change the tagline now to um, just one last thing, a charming film about a terrible murder, It's Not Shit. It's not shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great review. I can see that on the t-shirt. <laughs> it's not shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, let's talk about uh, photography and how you shot the film. At what stage do you come on, you know, when do you first get involved? Um, I came on pretty early actually, before the script was written. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's early, no? <laughs> It's quite early. Um, yeah, I, I met Alex um, um, on another film that was shot in her house. And uh, I guess she remembered me and she was like, Julia, do you want to shoot this film? And it's my first feature, so I was like, hell yeah, oh, let's, wow. let's do this. So, I was really keen and um, it was really a great collaboration because we really had to kind of create the visuals for this very specific story, you know, um, within the budget that we had and um, it was also very um, a good challenge for me to kind of source all kits, all that kind of stuff, um, you know, um, understand how many people we, we, we would have needed to, to get it done as well and then so, yeah, sorry, what, 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 no, was, the question? <laughs> what was your um, What was your most challenging moment on the shoot for you? Hmm. Let me think about it for a second. Who's Dali? No, I, I mean, sure, sure. So we went to Who's Valley and we were meant to have like two hours shooting with like 40 shots to be done. And then luckily nobody kicked us out, so we kept shooting. Yeah. And um, it was really cold. For, for everyone, um, I think uh, they regretted the costume choices at that point, <laughs> where they just couldn't put more layers. Uh, and but yeah, I think I think for me, the the most challenging was that, that was definitely challenging because we didn't have the time to kind of like be as much in control as we could with the with the with the look of the film. But I think a lot of, um, for example, maybe. We did a good job, but like all the scenes in the attic, yeah. the attic is small. It's hard to cramp all those people, make them look all right. Where am I going to put the lights to light them, and all this kind of stuff? So we, we got quite um, annoyed that you know to, to get to get that kind of stuff done. There's quite a lot of people in this room who were in the montage scene, which is you know when all the different people come and and say what it is they want to do, and now they will. Uh, confirm what Julia has just said because when we were shooting the montage when they all go up the stairs do you remember all that equipment we had on the landing and you guys had to queue up and then we had to let you in one at a time to go up and up the next level of stairs so it was just, it was chaos um, but, um, it, but it was fun, it was really fun because there was, I don't know how many, about 12 crew and then all those people from the montage in lines up the stairs creeping up, ready to do their bit. So, um, yeah, that was quite a challenge. Um, Henry, what was your greatest challenge? I'm guessing on a, on a, a location that isn't a, isn't a set, it's a real house. I'm guessing that has a lot of issues. Yeah, pretty much everything you could. Okay, so in the centre of that, literally, <laughs> the centre of the house is a very loud boiler. <laughs> uh, the house is wooden floors, wooden walls, wooden double vaulted ceilings, 
So, yeah, getting any no usable like sound in that was gonna bounce around. Yes. a real challenge. Yeah. And the only locations we had that wasn't that was a shed in the garden and <laughs> 100 mile an hour winds at Ooze Valley. Mm -hmm. So, the fact that you can hear dialogue is <laughs> pretty rad for me. <laughs> um, well done. Yeah, uh, I'd say my, probably my biggest challenge wasn't necessarily that, because bef before this, this is pretty much my first proper feature film. But before this, I've done a few Bollywoods, <laughs> so I'm quite used to like just getting stuck in and solving the problems. Um, but I wanted this project was the, I guess, what I, I wanted it to be the best, the best thing I'd ever produced up to that point, um, and I think it still is. But not having an assistant of my own was probably a poor choice. Right. Um, trying to do an eight-handed feature film on my own was probably silly, but uh, I'm proud of myself that we did it. Yeah, um, brilliantly. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was good fun. Good fun. Um, Guy, a slight, slightly different question for you. So uh, you're, you were in the cast and part of the production, <laughs> the producer. First AD, yeah. can you just explain to people that might not know what a first AD is, what is your role? Shouting. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it to anyone as <laughs> a <laughs> job, <laughs> especially on a low part. No, I'm joking. Um, so I mean, in general, first CD is uh, the person that is in charge to make sure that everything on set is running on time, everyone is, is busy doing their job, and yeah, basically keep people uh, on, uh, on schedule. Um, yeah. Department. yeah. So you basically have like, a shot list on my understanding is you have, a, you have a shot list and you kind of make sure everything runs yeah, day yeah, by day. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, you know, obviously that's, you know, ideally, but then on the day-to-day -day things can change even second by second, because mm. uh, especially in this case, we, uh, when Alex and Giulio presented me the original shot list, uh, um, there were like probably around different, 40 different camera positions per day. Mm. Uh, <laughs> was never, it was never. Yes, so. so. <laughs> and it was, yeah, and, and that was like, a bit, uh, I was like, okay, that's a, you know, um, how, how can I say? Um, not happening. Not happening, yeah, exactly. Unrealistic. Unrealistic, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that is, is about trying to find um, a good balance to still be able to communicate the story within the budget and, uh, you know, there the were moments uh, that I had to go to Alex and say, hey, this is the reality of the facts. What do you want to cut? What do you think is going to affect the story? Um, but I think overall, especially if I consider the first meetings that me, Alex and Giulio had uh, and then taking to where the movie arrived, I think like, you know, it's, I, I still can't believe what has been achieved with, yeah, with the time that we had, the budget and everything. Amazing. And, yeah, everyone has worked really hard, and yeah. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. It was a fantastic crew, yeah. a fantastic director, <laughs> really well. Okay. Um, if there's any audience questions at this point, pop your hand up, and Kevin there will come and find you. Get yeah, in the middle there. Yeah, yeah, sure, thanks. Hello. Uh, Alex, sometimes in Q&As, uh, filmmakers say, I wish I would have done this different, and uh, I wish I would have done that different. Um, the question really is, do you and everybody involved with this film realise what an absolute thing of beauty you create? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh, so cool. I'm going to buy that man a drink. That was really good. <laughs> That's her <laughs> husband. I can't, <laughs> I can't see you, but come and grab me. I'll buy you a drink. Thank you for that. It's a lovely thing to say. Um, what would I have done differently? I mean, I'd have had a bigger budget. That would have been great. Um, <laughs> I, from crew and cast, I wouldn't have changed anyone. I just loved it so much. I mean, and working with them was just such a joy and a pleasure. Um, but there are things I've learned from about movie making, without any doubt, um, that I will do better next time. Um, I will definitely... And Guy is going to back me up on this. I will definitely have someone to do wardrobe makeup. Oh and I will everything. definitely have someone to do um, set. And props. Props yeah. and set. Because Guy and I did all of that too. And the consistency, my goodness, every, before we started shooting, we had photographs and we checked them. Is that jug in the right place? No, move it. You know, just to get... 
the consistency that you need so that you don't blow uh, the, the imagination of your audience. Alex, I, I think earlier you said there was 12 crew. I think, oh, I think it was actually was, 10. I think that was double the amount of people <laughs> we actually had. Genuinely. Yeah, let's count them. One camera, one lighting. One sound, you. Uh, we Guy. had focus, we had, we had focus. And a focus. Ball, a focus. Okay, so that's five. And then the Gaia. And then the other four. I counted Gaia. Okay. And you. That's five, six people. Yeah. We, it was a small tight. <laughs> it was a small budget, so we, yeah. everybody did everything. And we were all living in the same house. You know, some people were sleeping on the floors, and some people were lucky because they got to bed. <laughs> that was to its benefit, I think. Yeah. We did get on very well, and we were 100% focused. Uh, yeah. on the film and yeah. I hope that that shows and, and, and to hear a compliment like that is, you know, yeah. mm. thank you. Mm. Is there any other questions? Yeah, one, one free drink, it? One <laughs> Say something nice, <laughs> you'll get a drink. Hi, hello. Um, your film was really surprising because, all the, you know, I'm here to see the, all the horror stuff. It was a horror. <laughs> and I love the actors, I thought they were fantastic. Oh, thank the thing you. is, the ordinary person, how difficult was it for him not to interact with the ghosts? Yeah, so Jake, you mean, it was tough for him not to look at them, not to respond to what they were doing, because obviously they were there. Um, but I think he pulled it off. Mm, yeah, smashed it. He really did a great job. And when he arrives, what I really like about that is that he's this, you know, invisible guy who's just sending texts through, <laughs> who's actually critical to the story because Etta was with him kissing him when Olivia was taken. And so um, he's a really important person in the, in the history of the story. And when he turns up, suddenly there's a shift, isn't there, from this mystery into, oh, and it's also a bit of a love story. And I think he just did it so well. Lovely. And, and he's such a lovely lad as well. Oh, he's so, gorgeous. Yeah, so, thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> Can I say yeah, something? Quite nice. <laughs> Can I say something about the, the horror elements in the film? Yeah. Of course, this is not, um, a, not a horror It's film. not pure horror, it's but there was, there was elements about yes. it that we yeah. thought, yeah. you know, exactly. it's been submitted to this festival and we agreed that there are parts of it. You know, it you know, what is a horror film really at the end mm -hmm. of the day? There's lots of things that you can kind of put into that category. And on that, I take pride because I was telling Alex, we need to make this scary. <laughs> I literally, when we're shooting the, the bits that are supposed to scare you a bit, yeah. I, I was telling Alex, this needs to look like a horror film in this part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you thanks to me that we're here. Time for one more question if there is one in the audience, otherwise, if I have one. Try! Alex, do you have plans for any future films? Oh, I hope so. Let's all answer that one by one. Your next project, yeah. So yeah, I've got another project, um, which I am completing the um, screenplay on, and it's about scary fairies. Oh, flip, flip it, <laughs> scary fairies. <laughs> so, but it's quite, quite, kind of an, an unusual story. So um, that is my current next project, but we'll see. Uh, thank you. Yes, um, I... Don't do a lot of film. I mainly do theatres. So I, I, I have a few solo shows, so I'm, um, I, I take them around the world. The world. <laughs> but I am actually taking one to New York quite soon. But yeah, I'm, so I'm working on a new show, which actually is just interesting. I, I didn't write it myself. I wrote all the other ones, and it's um, the real story of Lady Macbeth, and it's a great script, one woman show. But. Um, Friends of mine who've seen it said it would be very good for horror, interestingly, in theatre, even though you don't think of it as a, a horror story, because it has those supernatural and scary elements. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing next, and whatever else comes up. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. Um, I have a couple of documentaries that will come out soon that I've worked on, but in terms of lined up next feature, we're just waiting on Alex. Yeah, the crew, same crew. <laughs> That'd be nice for the crew. Yeah, that's pretty concise, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
No, what have I got lined up? I'm kind of all over the place, really, with sound, because um, I do, I've got lots of fingers and lots of sound pies, <laughs> as it were. So this year, because of this film, actually, um, because of how much fun I had in it, I think I've deprioritized film in such that I only want to take scripts that will be as good as this experience. So I have worked on, on stuff since, and it has been almost as good, but we're still waiting for the next one, round two with Alex. <laughs> um, but at the moment this year, I'm largely focusing on work with voiceover artists. Mm. Uh, Kyle? Um, so I'm currently producing another short film, mm. um, which is more like crime uh, detective style. And then, um, yeah, I've actually got a couple of ideas finally that I started to like write down for yeah. um, potentially short film for to start with, and then yeah, but well, we we'll see. And cool. then yeah, Alex, <laughs> <laughs> waiting Hurry for up. the production. Come on. Yeah. Very much in demand. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think everyone can agree this film had the vibes, as we said earlier, down to a T. Can, can we have a round of applause, please, for our film? <laughs> <laughs>